Hi, right, Tim. Hi, right, Betty. Good morning. Afternoon. Good morning. Good morning. Well, technically, it's 12.01, so good afternoon. Yeah, I did say morning. Good afternoon. Rich is there. Tim, Raul, the man, the myth, the legend. Hi, hi, John. How are you? Where are my boots? That's fabulous. Belt. But not doing as good as you. I love that email. Touch the boots. You like that? Yeah. Yeah. And as it happens, it happens. You well, keep that's what happens when you, you know, when you're a good person and you stay in touch with people. Yeah. You know, you think he would have figured you out in 20 years, but I guess not. <laughs> cool, man. Well, you're looking, you're looking very Floridian there, brother. A no collar shirt. I was outside. Palm trees in the background. A little tan. It looked good. Yeah. Hey, Gladys. Yeah. Life is good. Life's a beach and then you spa. So Audrey's with us now, Doug, Rich. Boy, we're getting a whole group. That's good. Just like a team meeting. You always have such right. nice backgrounds, Gladys. Yeah, I love my stained glass window in my kitchen. It gives a lot of life. To the kids, yes, uh, with the color. And and you saw the recommendation that I gave you yesterday. Yes, I certainly did. Thank you very very much. Appreciate it. What I want to do is have us sort of sort of do that for each other today. 
Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah, just checking on something while people are checking in. Here right. We go. Elizabeth, okay, new agent. Oh, hello, Elizabeth. She's just joining us. Okay. So, and Doug's here. Elizabeth, you, you look sideways. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> It's either, either you were very gymnastic oriented or you were, had the phone facing. <laughs> oh, so that's what Elizabeth looks like. Now I get to put a face to the name. Have a nice time yesterday with the son's birthday party. You have to, if you speak, you have to unmute yourself or we can't hear you. Lower left hand corner, there's a little microphone with an X across it. Okay, just yeah, I, I got it. I got it. Can you, you hear me? Yeah, we can. Awesome. Hi. Uh, everybody, this is Elizabeth. Uh, she is a former associate with um, Jose. And, uh, and so she and I had a good long conversation yesterday. And I asked her on a one to 10, is she coming on board? And she said 10 and change. So <laughs> and, then, and then she went to her. Then she went to her son's birthday celebration, and yeah. um, and then she's got to see a couple of our videos. So she's here today joining us. I see we have Audrey with us as well. So anybody wants to say hello to? Uh, hello, to Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Welcome to Self Care. Welcome, Elizabeth. Thank you. She goes by Thank Izzy, you. and she speaks three languages. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here with you and to know you and to get to know you. And I'm really uh, excited and looking forward to working with you. Absolutely. Thank you. We're happy to have you. Thank you. And so you two can speak Spanish to each other. And she also oh. speaks Hebrew. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Fantastico. <laughs> <laughs> Claro, como no. And then we have Graziella, also trilingual. Uh, and almost. Hi, how are you? Grazi speaks Portuguese, Hi. Spanish, English, and a little bit of Italian. French. <laughs> and French. French. Oh, that's right. French, yes. Because you have your French friends. I remember. All right. So uh, we've got interesting stuff today while people are joining us. And, and one of the things, Elizabeth, or Izzy, as you go by, I had threatened everybody that I'm going to say the meeting starts at 1145. Oh. We can actually start at 12 because I say it starts at 12 and people show up until about, you know, it's a very Latin kind of culture. Of <laughs> South Florida. The time is just, you know, it's relative, you know. Um, I heard someone say that manana does not mean tomorrow. It just means not today. Okay. <laughs> no Miami time. Future, but not today. <clears throat> but anyhow, and we've got we're very well started. estimated already, but John. <laughs> so one of the things that I want to do today, <clears throat> we can start doing that, is that, you know, we've got um, a dozen of us now online and more are coming in. So what I want to do is have everybody be able to get testimonials from each other. Mm -hmm. So if everyone will put the link, their name, and the link to giving you a testimonial. Then each of us, if we commit to it, if you commit to you know, getting a dozen other testimonials from people, all you have to do is give out 11 other uh, 12 other testimonials. Right. So everybody gets a dozen, or however many people we have, if we all commit to do that. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. Now it's important to do five stars and it's important to put some words in there. Okay. Okay, so you can put in things like a very nice person, uh, great service, very responsive to the calls, whatever it is, but make a few comments. And then, you know, I was so pleased and unfortunately Mila's not here yet, she may be working. But yesterday in, in when I was talking to Elizabeth, talking about the Google local service ads and how powerful they are for our team and for the teams across the country, um, I looked up the Google local service ads for Miami. And Mila came up in the first position. 
and Lori Reeder, our Karen, real estate Karen, came up second, even though she had more testimonials because it was geographic proximity. So Mila knocked her out. And of course, Mila's had her license for 11 years. So with all those five stars, she looks great. And then to add 10 more on top of that would be fabulous for each person and get you up into that top three. Does that make sense? Yep. So if everybody will start that now, you can go into the chat and put chat to all and put in your code, copy and paste it and stick it right there. And that'll give everybody a chance to do testimonials for each other. And if all we get out of today's training, and there's a lot more to get out of it, but if all we get out of today's training was 10 testimonials, that could be enough to move you from under the top three to into the top three and get you a listing. Now, uh, Gladys, your team has had some success, right? With the Absolutely. Actually, I wanted to share this with you, um, John. Uh, we, I got a phone call from um, a person uh, and this lady apparently does some house cleaning. Uh, she goes to the house and she picked up all the furniture in there and she resell them and all that. Anyway, she contacted me and she said, oh, I have a very important client and I'm wondering if you could handle it. Um, I said, oh, well, I will do my very best. Tell me how you find me. She said, I went to Google and I saw how long you have been in business. And I thought, by the way, I like your picture. I said, oh, well, thank you. And then she said, call this lawyer. So anyway, Arthur and I, we went to this listing appointment for a $600,000 property that we are hoping we are gonna get. It's, it will be a state uh, home and um, we have to deal with a lawyer. So he is submitting the paperwork for approval to to the courts to see if we are the ones who are gonna be getting the listing. But my point is the opportunity was there because this woman had made some research on Google, which we just put this on Google not even two weeks ago. Yes, and so it'll be there for the next, work. it'll be there for the next 10 years. Oh my God, I love it. And now you're gonna have 10 more, if everybody does it today, 10 or 12 more. Right five-star testimonials. And that's what people do. It's the Amazon shopping for real estate. They go right. online, they ask Google, who's the best realtor? Google says, Google verified this many years in the business, this many testimonials and your picture. Right. And boom, you're at the top of the list. And that's having the billboard on the most, on the busiest, most important intersection on Google street and real estate way. And and to pay $20, $30, $40 for that lead after you've already talked to them. There's no upfront cost for setting all this up. Now, for those of you that are having challenges setting it up, we do have um, a guy, Conti Manabendra, he's one of our agents, he's really good at IT, and he'll do it for $200. He'll set up your Google My Business ad, and then he'll set up your your Google local service ad for you and connect the two of them and give you a, a recommendation by him. And all of that is done for you with the postcards being sent and pictures being put up and all that for 200. Now you can do it yourself, but some people don't like that or aren't good at it and they just wanna have somebody do it. So we have that service, but- What's the name of the, of the IT guy? His name is Amanda Bendra Ray. He goes by the nickname of Conti. And if that's what you want, I'll put you in touch with him. Okay, thanks. He's in-house, he's a good kid, and you know he'll do a good job for you on that. Okay? Because yes, this is, any other good stories about Gladys, thank you for sharing that, because to, to have a $600,000 property literally fall out of the sky without having to spend any money to get it. Right. When has that ever happened to us in 30 years in real estate? Right. That they're searching by realtor, not by house. Right. And you get to have your picture, you get to have all your five stars, and you get to have the number of years you've been in the business. Right. And people, if you're going to go buy a vacuum cleaner on 
on Amazon, what do you do? You look up vacuum cleaner. You look at the top three with the most five stars and you pick the one you think you like to look up. And by the way, I noticed that what Google does is rotate the agents constantly. Yes, yes. But, but the ones that get the most rotation are the ones that have the biggest bid, right. okay? And the most testimonials and the geographic proximity. That's why Mila was able to knock uh, Lori out of that first position because Lori had over a thousand testimonials and Mila had 40. But the geographic proximity of where they searched put Mila first. Right. So it's a combination of the two. So this is something, if you're not doing it, I want you to do this. Everybody look at me, give me your eyes. If you're not, if you don't have your Google My Business ad up and your Google Local Service ad up, put your hand out and go like this. <laughs> yes. That's, that's why Irish coaches have such flat foreheads because they're constantly going like this. So get it done, get it done. All right, um, and I wanted to uh, have another sort of testimonial today um, because Raul has put together a pretty good deal. Let me, um, let me get that together to show you Raul's email that he sent to me. Here we go. Okay. Now we do this and we do this. Raul, are you there? Raul, can you hear me? All right, you should be seeing an, um, an email that Raul sent me and I guess he's not hearing me because I can see him on the screen. Oh, oh, you are. All right, you have to uh, unmute. All right, but anyhow, Raul uh, was working with a buyer in his LinkedIn network. They both work for Merck up in, in New Jersey. And he said to him, hey, will you help me find a home? And, and you know, I said, sure, what do you think? So he sends the guy, you know, he does a buyer consultation with him and his wife. They want something modern. He set it up on his portal on his website and they started looking for homes for 1.5 million, you know? So he was here last week and they saw six homes. Some of them were trashed, but uh, it was a cash deal, uh, no issue. Uh, so he found him a home uh, that was under contract, but he spoke to the agent, he said cash, the agent rearranged everything and, uh, and he's got the deal going down and the buyers have already given him two other buyers. My God. So and awesome. that's the thing, Gladys, I'm so happy to hear that you're working with that lawyer because you do a good job on this one. Yes. And that lawyer will be a steady stream because he handles estates. Absolutely. And that lawyer is going to be able to say to the clients, if you know someone's daughter or son of someone that's passed, you can say, I've got the perfect real estate agent for you. I've worked with her and her team in the past. And all of that costs you nothing out of pocket to get noticed and it's what it's going to cost you at the most 50 bucks for that deal right it's the best advice i've ever given any realtor anywhere other than i told one guy who we should marry and they've been married ever since so. but financially oh. <laughs> best advice all right so um raul can, uh, can you come online or are you i heard you kind of wave me off i saw you wave me off no, I'm online. Okay, and just give us a little bit into that because I mean, this is a, you know, this is the way real estate works. Well, I mean, I've been doing real estate for 12 years, uh, mainly in New Jersey, and I ran a big office, 200 agents, different than here. You hold every agent's hands like John does. <laughs> Help him. Uh, so I told my agents, never give up, go for it. If there's on the contract, put send an offer in. There's no reason not to do it. Nah, I got to create work and everything. Uh -uh. You don't know what could happen. So when talking, I asked the agent, I said, so you just went on the contract, uh, the attorney review. He says, yeah. And I go, what a shame because my guy is here for two days. He's cash and he's looking for a house like yours. 
And she said, let me talk to the owner. So she called the owner and the owner said, keep showing it. So we went to see it. We loved it. And my guy go ahead. I lost it. And I said, no, you did not yet. Not until the fat lady sings. So let's try this. Let me write an offer. A thousand dollars over. Put in $150,000 down. And see what happens. Yep. She called me when I sent the email to, to Matt and you. They called me that's the day before and says, guess what? We're killing the other deal because the other person asked for, asked for an extension and we're not doing that. And yep. I have two other, and we have two other offers, but you came in first. You want it? Let's rock and roll. So yep. it's, it's all about being in the dance floor, be able to dance. You're home, I'm not gonna do it. Listen, ask the question. Are they accepting any other offers? If it's the right house, it will happen. House is thick, gorgeous, totally redone, modern, modern, and Pinecrest. And I gotta tell you, if you don't put in the offer, the answer is always no. That's right. 100% no. 100% of the shots you don't take will not go in. Okay? That's right. So, it's like uh, target we'll shooting. The paperwork and a forty-five thousand dollar commission. Not a bad, not a bad little not a bad start. paperwork. Not a bad day. Yeah. Not a bad day. And Arthur just Do came in. Doing the inspection tomorrow. That's Good our man. fast food. We're wow. Love those stories. You know, that's what it takes, guys. In this market, you know, there's so many crazy things going on, and that's what we're all about today. And I saw Arthur come in, and I don't know if Mila's with him yet. Um, but I will say again, uh, author, when I was talking to an agent yesterday, um, who's in Miami, our, when our new agent, Izzy, and, and there's author. And, uh, so we did a search on the area that she's living in and Mila came up number one. She actually bumped, uh, Karen, you know, Lori reader into the second position. So I was thrilled because I, I got to open that up and I said, Oh, take a look. Oh. Our agent is in the number one position. Good job. So thank you for that. Well done. All right. Any other questions or let's move into the what do you got? What do you need? Anybody got anything they want to move? What do you got? What do you need? Okay, John, I am going to say about this house that hopefully we will get the listing before the end of the week. It's a very, very large home, over 4,000 square feet in the heart of Hollywood Hills. Uh, the kitchen doesn't need to be redone in my opinion, but because the person that used to live that was an elderly gentleman, he was into the antique business. So the property is overloaded with antiques. Uh, space wise uh, is going to need some uh, remodeling but in my opinion, it's mostly the flooring. You know, the kitchen is already done and it looks good. Um, it's only a little, cosmetic, square feet only a little cosmetic. Enormous house. Right. Right. We, we did our comparables, Arthur and I. We noticed that there is some homes that have sold between 570 to 675. So if we price our property in the 600 range, we will not have a problem with the end appraisal because it's going to come in perhaps even slightly higher. Uh, and there is a, that area of Hollywood Hills, there's a lot of lawyers and doctors near Joe DiMaggio Children's Hospital that it can work out yeah. very well. Yeah. So keep it in mind just in case if you happen to be working with somebody that's looking in that price range okay. for a very large home. Hollywood Hills, 4,000 plus square feet. And uh, good price point. Okay. So Mila just popped in. Mila, I have to congratulate you. Oh, I like the new hairdo, by the way. Yes, she looks cute. <laughs> um, but Mila, I was, I was speaking with Izzy, a new agent that's here today, yesterday, and I was telling her about the Google local service ads. So I said, well, let me pull up the area that you're in. And she's in the Aventura area. Okay. Aventura, North Miami. And when it pulled it up, you came up number one. Your Google service ad was number one. You even beat out Lori Reader. So we love that. 
you know, crush mm -hmm. Karen, that's the motto. So good job. And, and hopefully you'll start to get some calls from that. Yeah, I'm starting getting calls, a lot of calls every day. Perfect. So, yeah. What more could a real estate agent ask for? My phone is ringing. People are calling me. I mean, there beautiful, well done. done. If I have to say, you know that I noticed there's a difference and this is my recommendations for the agent. Use their home address. 100%. Using the office because that made a difference. Um, Absolutely. I don't get as many calls and I think it's because I use the office versus uh, my home address. I think that's very important. And, and for two reasons, because when more people are using the office, geographic proximity, that's right. where you see the rotation. Okay, because if we've got five agents with 15 testimonials, they're right. going to rotate you through. Whereas if you're in your home, probably it's right in the middle of your farm too. Right. And you're not going to be competing with our other agents because our agents know about this, but the other agents don't. It's still a mystery. I talk, I talk to brokers in sell state and I say, Hey, how you guys doing with the local service ads? And they said, with, with what? And I said, yeah, don't tell them. <laughs> well, but they're in other states. <laughs> they're the ones that are in Colorado and California and, and even, even over on the West coast of Florida, they don't know about it. Don't tell them. They're going to tell the others. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Honestly, I didn't because I'm going to charge them for it when I do it. Okay, but having said that, I've only seen a couple of people now put the link for your Google service ad. Hello, Amarel. Put the link for your Google, Google local service ad in the chat. If you promise to give a five-star testimonial with some words to it to every person, you can put your name in the chat and every person can give you a testimonial. And there's 14 of us right now. So you could have 13 more testimonials by the end of the day, right. which of course will jump you ahead of other agents. So- Yeah, I don't have mine yet, but I'll, I'll send you guys when I do. Right, so I have a question. Uh, um, let me, let me say number one, thing, one agent. Let me say one thing and then handle your question, please. We want you to have your Google service ad tied up to your Google My Business account. And so all you have to do is send the link for the Google My Business. But go ahead, Grazi. Sorry, I just want to finish that thought. Uh, my, my Audi is a bit delayed. I was talking over you and I didn't realize that. I'm sorry. Um, uh, Mila, number one agent near me. <laughs> so have you used only the office or have you used other locations? I use my address as my office in the no, in the Google no, space. It's your home address. Oh yeah, my home address. Definitely your home address, address that's is it? better. Definitely home address is better. Two reasons. One, you're next to your market, you're right in the middle of your market, your farm, and two generally, and two, you're not competing with all the other agents that are using the office address. Right. No, yeah, but remember that since it's a radius of 50 mile, I didn't know if anybody else was sure. going up north or up down south. It's uh, We have some agents up north. Rich Mastin is up there, Tim, and they've been getting a little activity, but we've got to get some things sorted out. Again, I said this in the beginning and I wanted to set the proper expectations. Google is not very organized with this. They're launching it. They're trying to fly the plane while they're still building the wings. So, yeah. you know, we're getting different comments from different people there. So mm -hmm. it's kind of frustrating for, for some, but, but, you know, I definitely recommend the home address. Arthur's just popped up on the screen because he's had some, some activity with it as well. He and Mila and Gladys, of course, are partners on the Dream Team. Hey, can I, can I share the screen for a second? Sure. Uh, well, well, first of all, you said something that was incorrect earlier. When you ask for reviews, you have to ask through Google My Business. Uh, you can't ask for for um, for referrals through um, through local service ads. All of your referrals, re uh, recommendations, recommendations from Google My Business automatically get transferred to local service ads. If they're connected, we're having an issue with Rich and a couple other people. If if it says reviews pending. It's because you have a discrepancy between the address on your real estate license and the address of your place of business. 
listening. Okay. So you, so you need to go and look at your real estate license and make sure that the addresses are the same. Google uh, local service ads um, got in their head that you have to, they, they want to match the address on your license with your business address. Even though that's the wrong thing because that's not where you work. Right. You so know, Tim, if, if Rich is hearing this, because uh, Rich has been in and out, but Tim, if you'd relate this to Rich, because you guys work together, uh, but that might be what's going on. That is. What yeah, it's the same address. It's the same? It yeah. is. All right, Rich is there. Okay. So it's the same address. So that's not the solution. Okay. Well, if you call up local service ads, their phone number, they will take care of you. There might be something that you have to send them to do it. But if you call them up, They'll take you every step of the way. They may send you an email where you have to sign off on something, but call the number on local service ads. And they yeah, will that's what I did. I talked to the local service ads and all they're saying is the opposite. They're saying you got to get the reviews through the local service ads, not Google My Business. So they told me I have 45 reviews through Google My Business and one through local service ad. And they're advising me to do it the other way. Okay. Uh, make, they, well, well, here's the other thing. They change the rules every day. Yeah. And, and like I said, they're flying the plane while they're building it. I'm going to talk to Eisenhower about this tomorrow because I've talked to Tim and, and, and Rich about this because we want to get this one solved. Okay. Thank you, guys. Yeah. I'm Just let us know. I haven't done mine yet. Like yesterday from local service ads uh, from, from Google My Business did not transfer over. So. <laughs> Yeah, I just can't get the reviews to count. Yeah, and also there's one other issue with Google My Business. Some ads don't get posted for whatever reason. They've got a strict uh, approval policy. And what I think is clean, they don't. You know, I've seen some reviews that were just wonderful. Arthur, is, uh, Ar Arthur went the extra mile to get me into our home. And I highly recommend them, and it's no good. Who knows? Yeah. So whatever they put in there. All right. And again, I and I did set the expectation that this is a pain in the neck. That's why we came up with the the guy to do it for you because it's just jump through hoops. Now some people get the right person when they talk to, like uh, Kimberly Frankel did, and bang, she started getting calls right away, and everything was honky dory. And other people, the, the advice is opposite. One saying one thing, one saying another. But whatever it is, we got to ride this Bruck and Bronco because it's the payoffs are huge. The, the belt buckle you get for winning this rodeo is attached to tens of thousands of dollars. All right. Uh, anybody else got a what do you got? What do you need? Anything for sale? They want to move. Thank you for that. Uh, we, have, we have a uh, schedule tomorrow for Thursday. Well, you can bring her over here and by the time you go to Austin for an interview. Uh, Gladys? We're hearing everything that you're saying. I'm going to um, ask you to mute. Okay, we have we have a listing at 3700 Bahama Drive that I put in the computer yesterday. Okay. And uh, I've already had 5,000 showing requests. <laughs> but uh, oh, that's an exaggeration, but it's not really. Uh, but but we only have from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. tomorrow to sell the house. Okay. That's it. And uh, I only have so many slots. So and the price on it is? 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. No, the price. 3 three thirty for a 3-2 with the pool that needs a complete remodel inside, but the roof and the air conditioning system are in good shape. And okay. Structure. All right. All right. Good. Good, good. All right. So listen, what I wanted to cover today um, is Eisenhower talk, unless there's any other, what do you got? What do you need? No? Okay, so um, I see that we've got you know 15 participants and only three people have put in their chat request for getting uh, testimonials. So put your link in there, um, and now there's four. Um, um, John, I don't even know how to do that. <laughs> okay, I, that's because I do everything for her. <laughs> so our that's exaggeration. <laughs> well. But just copy and paste. Yeah, Is that the way it works? Copy and paste it into the chat. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to start. Um, 
Brian has put some great things together and I sent the email for today's meeting and you all saw that there were several very powerful charts that you can use when you're talking to your clients. You know, there's a difference between telling and showing. You know, you can sit there and give your opinion, but if you've got facts, facts are very stubborn things. And if you can say to them, here's what's going on, it's one thing to say there's a supply and demand imbalance. It's another thing to show them how the population's growing, but houses are 20% of what was built in the previous decade. That somebody will understand instantly. And a lot of other charts in there that are helpful. You can download those and use them on your own. They're good to go. They're from the Eisenhower materials, okay? So I also wanted to remind you that um, the Eisenhower materials are available to you and there's a lot in there about dealing with buyers in this market, but we're gonna switch over to a video with Brian. So I'm gonna take over the screen. Now we're up to six good testimonials, but this is, this is gold. So here's Brian talking about dealing with buyers in this market. Because if you're not, if you're working hard in this market, you're not doing it right. That's the theme for today. This is a work smart market. We're not all about uh, increasing your income with ICC. You value you having a good life. That's what it's all for anyway. <laughs> Hi, this is Brian Eisenhower uh, with Eisenhower Coaching and Consulting, uh, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about life balance. One of the things, you know, we, we have a, a, a large real estate coaching company with many coaches scattered across North America now, and we represent uh, hundreds of clients and uh, oh, please, some of the uh, real estate agents and teams in North America, actually, and we got ourselves on the success. Could I ask everybody to please mute themselves because we're getting some background conversations and I know you want to have those private. Success of our coaching clients, the real estate agents, the, whether they solo agents, teams, or, or broker owners. And um, that's our job, right? Is to help them increase their business and, and generate more income. But as a coach, it's very important, uh, you know, because that's not usually our goal in life, right, is just to generate more income. We usually want, I mean, there's kind of a, a twofold goal out there, right? It's we all want more income, and then we want more time to enjoy life. So, and if you don't have that type of business model, we get a problem. Like, we always want more income. But hopefully, that you know, there's some reason for it. There, there's something else out there that, that we want, whether it's spend more time with our family, you know, we're into hobbies or just want to relax, whatever it is, play golf, who knows. But we want to get more life, more security, and more balance in our life. Now, you know, we're only on the planet for, you know, one turn. I think most people believe that. I guess there are some people who think we come back all I know for sure is this term, okay? And when we are on the planet, you know, it's important to enjoy your life too. And, and, and you'll see, I mean, you see this all the time um, in real estate. You'll see people like talking about how they burn the midnight oil and they, they work till late hours of the night. You got to hustle and rise and grind and all that kind of stuff. And, and I, I respect hustle and I like people who can work too. I, I think most people uh, are more impressed with leaders. Uh, and, I, and I have to coach this actually quite a bit too, you know, because we do coach a lot of successful leaders. And if, you know, they're out on social media talking about how they're working till two in the morning and that's what it takes to succeed in real estate. And I'm up at, you know, 1 a.m. You know, I'm taking, you know, photos of me at the office. It's dark or my clock and, and how late I'm working, how hard I'm working. You know, if you're a leader and you want people to follow you and come work at your real estate brokerage or work on your real estate team, believe it or not, most people, People don't want that they don't you know in fact i'm wondering like man you don't have a family do you have anything else going on like well no wonder you sell so much real estate you're cheating you know you're working twice as much as everybody else you should make more money but most people aren't going to be willing to sacrifice their life because they have a life so they might be looking at the agent who's doing all this you know bragging about how hard they work and thinking man get a life so understand you're not really impressing people when you're doing that kind of stuff because they want life balance and, and i'll tell you even if you are a really hard worker you want life balance too because you will burn out things will get old one way or the other i have seen it time and time again it takes some more than others um it will take a toll on you if you don't keep yourself well-rounded in life in fact i've been there many a times so you know what i want to talk to you about today is one of the tools that we use in our coaching i'm going to 
we'll kind of show it to you and give you an idea how you can ensure that you create longevity in your business uh, and enjoy your life while you have a very successful business. Because I, I, one thing that really bothers me is uh, I had success selling real estate and a lot of success, you know, running and opening and owning uh, real estate brokerages and, 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 and now with a consulting company too. And, you know, a lot of people say, wow, you, you know, you just must not have a life. And, and, and that's because the stigma that people get, successful people often give off, right? It's, I just work all the time, therefore I don't have a life. Well, I do have a life. I'm very proud of it. I have a pretty darn good life balance, certainly better than I've had uh, at other times in my life. You know, I'm very proud of that. And I really want other people to make sure that they have that feeling as well, too. So I'm going to turn my screen around so you can see a tool that we use with our coaching clients, clients called the Life Balance Wheel. And the Life Balance Wheel kind of breaks down different spokes on the wheel. You can see there it starts at the top up here with spirituality. And then we move over to health, work, social, development, recreation, family, and life planning, right? This is, in our opinion, you know, there's lots of different ways you can balance life, but I think this breaks it out in the most detail possibly. So, you know, spirituality, just to give you an idea, you know, this for a lot of people, it's church, you know, it could be meditation, any type of spiritual, you know, something higher than yourself or bigger than you out there that kind of gets you out of yourself and able to look down on yourself from an objective point of view and make sure that you're steering yourself in a very positive way that you'd like to see yourself moving forward. Health, very, very big one. Keeping yourself healthy is really important, so whether it be fitness or your diet. Um, making sure your stress levels are low. I gets more and more important as you get older. Uh, you'll feel a lot better. Um, I'll tell you, I've been, you know, different periods of my life, I've been, you know, really healthy and then I've gotten, I've gotten unhealthy at different times. And I know that when I'm really, really healthy, I'm working out, I have a diet, I, I'm sleeping a lot less. I don't need to. I'm much more well rested. My energy levels go up. Uh, so that's really, really important. And I'll go back to spirituality. This is one um, that I tend to let drop, even though I know how important it is. Um, arguably should be the most important thing for somebody and you know it seems like you know i'm the only one watching that so um my wife now is, is a really good uh, accountability partner for spirituality and she helps me out a lot to make sure that i don't you know I'll, I'll tend to cut out stuff in this department when i get too busy and even though i know i shouldn't I keep it and it will cut it completely i haven't been boy am i a lot happier for it i need to remember that and it's just a, it's a habit just like anything else we got to set right you know, most of our clients, this is where they excel. They're, they're doing well at work, you know, um, which is great. But I want to mention something. <clears throat> I saw something on Facebook, um, and it was Arnold Schwarzenegger and his two sons. And, and one son is in great shape, very athletic, and the other son is way out of shape. It's not DNA, it's habits. And that's what Brian just mentioned, is developing the right habits. Um, I went fishing with Brian a couple weeks ago, and he's a triathlete. He's in incredible shape, and he's filled with energy, and, and so um, that's a good, a good lesson. You know, you know, this is all the stuff, you know, how are we doing with improving our skills, our management, not just how much money we're making, right? It's well-rounded in the work. We'll give you a full bullet, a few bullet points there to help you. Social, you know, friends are important. You know, your community is important to you as well, too, your environment. We can also do really bad there. We can, we can have friends that really make us feel awful. We can have friends that don't push us. That, you know, something we always say is you're, you know, you're the aggregate of the people you spend the most time with. So choose your people wisely. If you're hanging around a bunch of losers, guess what? They're going to act like crabs in a bucket and pull you back in down with them. So get around people that push you, that drive you, that motivate you, that energize you. Uh, development. This is you bettering yourself, whether it's, you know, making sure okay. you're doing I wanted to make a quick comment on that as well. Having people like Arthur Malley and Gladys and Robert Morales and Doug and, you know, Raul coming in and, and Amaril and, and, and having the kind of people that we have in this organization, that's very powerful to me. And, and you know, seeing Betty, you know, working and, and being on top of things and having those kinds of people in your life is an important thing. I mean, it, it's business, but there's also more to it. Uh, I think adding, adding Gladys and, the, and Arthur and Mila and the Dream Team has been a big thing for our office and not just on the deals they do. More reading, 
improving your education, your intellect, your self-esteem, things like that, you know, bettering yourself in general personal development. There can be some professional development in there too. Uh, there's a lot of books out there, webinars, podcasts, you can be reading to further yourself. Recreation, you gotta, you know, what are your hobbies? What are your passions? You know, sports, literature, arts, music, travel, vacationing, human fun, vacationing. That's a big one for a lot of people too. Make sure you give yourself a score on that one. Same with uh, life planning. How are you doing with your family? I mean, excuse me, I skipped family. How are you doing with your family? How much time are you spending with your family? That's, I mean, how are you doing with your spouse? Parenting, you know, what can we do to improve our, our, our family relations? And then finally, life planning. This is your financial planning, your time management, your goal setting for your life, for your career, for your family, all of these things. You know, how are you doing monitoring these? So what I'll do, just to let you know, is I, you know, I'll have my clients go through and write a number in each of these categories on a scale of one to ten, with ten being the best. So we might, for spirituality, write you know a tier. Then for health, we might say, okay, I'm, I'm not doing so good. I haven't been getting to the gym, and I've eaten terribly. I put on some weight, so I'm down at a four here. Work doing okay. While Brian's walking through this, go ahead and mentally give yourself your score and see if that's the score you want and need to have in the future because you do get to choose. The one thing that I was taught that I pass on to everyone this choice is your superpower or your kryptonite. Hey, but I really need some help there. I didn't generate as much business as I want to last year. So six, let's say. Social, friends, community, doing pretty there. I've been having a lot of friends, with them, so maybe a nine there. So we actually draw it out. And what we'll then do is see where we need the most work and we'll make a conscious effort to then put a lot of, you know, time blocking, time management. Yeah. And we'll actually put this in our business plans with our clients. And a lot of our team leaders and broker owners will turn around and use this with the, the people that they mentor or that are on their teams and really try to help them balance out their life and get very purposeful about the areas of their life that they need the most help in. And I think that's a really important way to do it. I think that we're going to do all this naturally and that this is corny and silly. Believe it or not, a little bit of focus, a little planning uh, will, will make it happen. For me, it's got to be in my calendar. So, you know, if I'm slacking on something, I'm going to put all these things in my calendar. My wife and I do meet um, because of these charts. We meet, um, you know, at least monthly. We have a monthly schedule meeting where we meet. We go over our budgeting and our planning and, and, and goals together, almost like accountability partners and then managing, you know, the household finances and business. And we take a look and make sure that we have to force ourselves to make sure we take uh, vacations and we have to plan those out well in advance because, you know, we're busy people with kids. And so we'll plan those out long in advance to make sure they happen. And that's just not natural for most of us, but we have to get purposeful about things to keep that, to keep ourselves balanced out there and make sure some of the areas aren't dropping too low in the wheel. Um, so that's more or less, uh, how we use the life balance wheel. And it's, it's very easy. I mean, you can go on Google and search a lot of different life balance wheels out there too and pick one you like and do this exercise yeah, yeah. with your ice hour uh, coaching coach. You can talk to them about filling it out, let them hold you accountable to it. And that's the big deal there is accountability. I'm lucky I've got my wife and, and all the different coaches and the staff at ICC. We kind of hold ourselves accountable to those things because again, you know, who you're running with will determine how fast you run. And uh, if you're looking to, to get to Balance in a hurry and get some other people involved. It tends to get put on the shelf somewhere. Uh, we don't get to. So, anyway, I hope this helps you guys. We're not all about uh, increasing your income from ICC. You have a good life. That's what it's all for, anyway. So, if you like this video, there we go. So, I'm going to head over to the beginning and then I'm going to put in the link the uh, all the scripts. The, the video about the buyer consultation scripts. So let me pull that up for you and I'll put it in the link as well. This is why this is the best market for agents. In this market, 
This is why this is the best market for agents. If you're working hard in this market, you're doing something wrong. If you really want to get offers accepted, I'm going to tell you how. I want to show you some things right now about the market, about working with buyers in this market. So for you that are buyer's agents, that have buyer's agents, or, or a solo agent that represents buyer agents, that should cover just about everybody. There's a lot of frustration on the buyer side of transactions right now. And what's funny is a lot of people are saying, man, it's so hard right now. I'm working my brains out trying to get them a house. And if you're saying that, you're doing something wrong. Okay. I'm going to say that. If you're working too hard on the buyer sides of transactions right now, you're doing something wrong. Okay. And you need to write that down and put it up on your wall. If I'm stressed out, I'm doing something wrong because you are. This is the easiest market to represent buyers in. Okay. We got to know that. Now, if you're getting stressed out on the listing side, that's something different. I'm not talking about that right now. That's uptown problems. We're not there. You got tons of listings, super, dear, you know, <laughs> shut up. But if we're on the buyer side, I want to talk about that. On the buyer side, it should be easy, easy, easy. Because in a nutshell, we shouldn't be showing any properties, if just a few. Does that make sense? We shouldn't be. Like if you're showing a lot of properties, you're doing your clients a disservice right now. They need to be writing more offers and you should be showing it to them after it gets accepted. Does that make sense? Which means we're going to schedule the showing next week at three o'clock on Tuesday, not this Friday night at six o'clock PM or not this Sunday night. We're going to get the offer accepted. So we're going to write strong enough offers to get accepted. And then we're going to get them in that house to inspect it quicker. Welcome to 2004, five and six. So you're going to have to get, this is not meaning, oh, we're just going to write offers where, you know, we're going to put it way above the asking price and we're going to waive all our contingencies. That's not going to cut it because they're going to want you to come into the house and see the house first, right? If we start doing too much of that. You're going to work yourself to death. And more importantly, your clients are not going to get the offers accepted. So I want to start by telling you that we need to set proper buyer expectations up front. And I'm gonna give you some new tools to do this today. When I tell you that we are going into a massive uh, uh, historical appreciation market, I mean it. I mean, 2001 to 2025 minimum, we're gonna see 10 to 15% appreciation a year. That's never happened before, okay? Warren Buffett was on TV yesterday saying the exact same thing. So it's very important we understand why that is so we can intelligently explain that because this is not an if, this is not a maybe. I'm telling you it's going to happen. It's going to freaking happen. Okay? Let me show you why. And it's important you understand why. All right? So some of you have seen some similar charts come on, but I'm going to show you this one, and I'm going to give it to you, so don't worry about that. This shows you our homes built in history by decade in the United States. This is taken from the U.S. Census Bureau. Now, these charts are all available to you in the email that I sent out about the meeting. This is the, this is the major stat that most real estate investment trusts and hedge funds are relying on right now. And you can see the number of homes in millions that are purchased in the 1970s, the 80s, the 90s, and the 2000s. And then in 2010 to 2020, Look what happened. Look what happened. We just stopped building houses in this country. Why? Because back here in 2007, 8, 9, every home builder either got spooked or went bankrupt. And when they get spooked, they got afraid to build 100 homes at once. They just build them one at a time. Or they stopped building. And they pulled back everywhere. So our housing supply dramatically dropped. Everybody All right. that? Dude, that's amazing. I like every agent needs to have a copy of that physically on them for any conversation that they're going to have. Oh, it's the most telling the, factor. Yeah. I, I've, not, I've never seen anything that describes the market and why we're in it right now. And at the same time, extinguishes any conversation about a bubble. It's, it's, it's just one image that, that does all that work for you all at once. That's correct. That's yeah. Great stuff. When people say, hey, I'm going to wait for houses to come back down. You can actually intelligently say they will not. And if you're afraid to say it because some broker says not to or you don't, 
I really, really would question, like you're the type of professional that really shouldn't be representing clients. I mean, that's like a doctor who is afraid to tell their patient they've got cancer. See what I'm saying? It will take at least five years for us to get our supply to catch up with demand to where it should be. And even then, we're having babies at a very rapid rate. I mean, we used to have 2.1 babies per family. Now the national average is 3.7. Put that in your presentation. It's just supply and demand. 3.7, that's 50% more kids the average family is having today than in the last decade. That's, these two factors are just. Population is growing rapidly so that the need, the demand is compounding every single year. Yet our housing supply has dropped down to 20% of where it needs to be. Yet the demand is skyrocketing. And then we got a bunch of gasoline we just poured on the fire, right? Like COVID, can't get supply, labor costs, material costs, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Low interest rates. Those are just temporary short-term things that a bunch of, you know, pundits like to talk about. You know, that's what the media likes to talk about. But they're all avoiding the real problem. The real problem has nothing to do with COVID. This is not a short-term problem. This has been a problem we've been, the people in the know, the smart money's been talking about for a long time. The smart money knows that the problem is right freaking here. And it's been here for a long time. It's been, we have no supply and that must make prices go up. And there is nothing that can change that. Demand cannot impact supply, supply controls. Yeah. The combination of supply and demand together is absolutely unstoppable. There's nothing. I mean, you could have civil wars. It does not matter what you do. That Those prices will carry on because people need a few things in life. They need food, water, shelter, and the ability to reproduce. If we move into an area where we know prices are going to go up, right? You're going to have a lot of people right now that differentiate smart money and dumb money, okay? And I'm going to explain to you the difference between the smart money and the dumb money. Smart money, which you always want to follow the smart money, do what they do, right? Hedge funds, real estate investment trusts, Warren Buffett, Berkshire Hathaway, massive institutions, they're buying the most of the houses across the country right now. Now, mind you, they're not buying in like LA. They're not that silly. But they're buying all over the country in mass. They're hedging against inflation by putting their ha getting out of cash because they know that the, the market's not going to come back. So the idea of saving a bunch of money and then buying a bunch of property when the market goes down that's called dumb money. That's what the dumb money's doing. Who are the dumb money? Dumb money is firemen, teachers, anyone that's not a professional investor. Normal Wally and the Beef, the Cleavers, husband, wife, two kids, that's dumb money. They buy off of emotion. They just say, I just can't believe we can't. You know, I'm just going to wait. I'm just going to wait. I'm going to wait till it all calms down. Then I'm going to buy one. It's all emotional. That's dumb money. It's our job to take dumb money, educate them, and get them to follow the smart money. See, hedge funds that are buying thousands of houses a month right now, real estate investment trusts, they know that for five to 10 years, we're going to get historical appreciation. So they're buying up everything, and they're holding it because they know what's about to happen. Make sense? That's smart money. Follow the smart money. Dumb money thinks that, well, prices are going to come back. The prices are never going to come back to what they are right now, ever. It's impossible. We just showed you that. And quite frankly, a lot of dumb money comes from people that have just been on this planet and adults in the last 12 years. I mean, they don't realize real estate prices don't go down. They think that they go down. Um, and it's kind of funny, like, and we've talked about this one millions of times, and I'll show it to you again, but this is the real estate values. Everybody thinks this little blip right here was like, oh, price is going down. And we're right back to where it's been for the last 60 freaking years. You see that? So everybody's freaked out about these three years right here, which turned around very, very quickly. So if you didn't need to sell, if you could just hold your breath for four years, you would have been fine. 
but everybody's, you know, we're drama queens, we're humans, and humans love to be big drama. They freak out over this, like this is some dramatic thing. You see what I'm saying? This is nothing. And here we are, right up to today. And what's going to happen, so says everybody else, is skyrocketing. 10 to 15% return on investment. Isn't that funny? That you can get a 10 to 15% return on investment just by sinking your property into something that often covers itself with rent or covers a lot of its costs with rent. You know how hard that is to do? Guys, if you cannot articulate this to a home buyer right now, I'm serious. You need to figure out how or hang it up because you're harming people. If you're empathizing with them saying, you're right, you should wait. Gosh, get them to a professional or learn how to have these tough conversations. Or you too are going to be the doctor who's too afraid to tell the patient they have cancer, so they never treat it. That makes sense? So don't let people say they're going to wait. Waiting is foolish right now. We have to say with absolute confidence, this is where all the smart money is. Everybody on this planet thinks the price is going up. Everybody knows this is the cheapest time you're going to get a house. Yet we all have buyers that are afraid to go above asking price right now, to spend too much money. And that's based on emotion. That's dumb money. Dumb money is emotional. There's like, man, I just, I'm tired of missing out on these houses. I just want to quit. Yeah, that's what they do. And you have got to keep them fighting. So how do we fight? A, we educate. That's number one. We have a buyer consultation always. And we show them these graphs. Does that make sense? We show them these graphs. Yes, I'll share this graph too. Although I think I share this every week. You guys got to come back. So they've got to hear this. And you know, to think that we're representing people. Man. The old saying is, when was the best time to buy a house? 10 years ago. When's the second time, best time to buy a house? Today. And I mean, it's just like going to a gunfight with a knife, man. We have got to show and not tell. You're going to hear lots of people start talking bubble and crash. Dumb. Just remember, dumb. Do not let it sink in. Just like when they talk about elections, dumb. When they talked about shifting because of the pandemic, dumb. What I tell you, supply and demand rule. Supply and demand rule. That's all you need to watch in this, in this industry. Everything else is a distraction that creates dumb money. Well, if you haven't taken an economics class, be sure to do so. It helps with this. Supply and demand, nothing will trump it ever. If we don't have enough supply, price is going up. Period. End of report. Nothing can trump it. Make sense? What you need to do is put blinders on. Anybody watch the Derby? Anybody watch Kentucky Derby? You know why they put blinders on? So the horse doesn't get distracted looking at the other horses. Don't get distracted worrying about pandemics, worrying about elections, worrying about interest rates. All I want you focused on is supply and demand. That's it. And then you will predict markets just fine. Make sense? This is not complex. But boy, the media sure likes to make it complex so they have something to write about. Don't listen to me. Tell the same to your clients. I would love to get a recording of this and have you turn around and just play it for your freaking clients. Let your buyers see it. Tell them. I was in this huge training for our region where we all were told that we have got to get aggressive. So how do we get aggressive? All right. So if you really want to get offers accepted, I'm going to tell you how. Now, you're going to have a lot better time with investor clients than owner-occupied clients. And I know usually you want owner-occupied clients. Well, guess what? We're going into a huge market shift, and it's going to be here for a while, and you're going to want investor clients. Okay, so what I'm going to do, it's 1 o'clock. So we try to keep our meetings to an hour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the link to the next, there's another 30 minutes left in this video where Brian goes into great detail about how to and what documents to use to make this work for you. So I'm going to copy this and put it right into our link. And I'd like to get a couple of people to make a comment on something that you heard or saw or that you could use either in the in the video or in the email that I sent to you. And so there's 14 comments in there, so that's good. And then the link for this video is now in there. 
remember this goes away so you want to copy and paste that stuff right now so while we're doing that i want to open it up to the floor who learned something from what we've covered today it's so cute when you ask salespeople not to talk they all talk and when you ask i them don't talk, see your link john i just put it in there I, it's not there okay um me oh it only went i'm sorry it, thank you for that grazi um for some reason You're not it giving to, to everyone and yeah it only them. went to one person yeah let me get that uh thank you for that mm -hmm. john i'll share them around please um the graph showing visually the dramatic drop in um in production over the past decade mind-blowing it's one thing to hear it but having that visual and actually seeing that drop it was worth the price of attendance and 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 i agree with you and to say and to explain to them why it happened because in 2007 and 8 when we had that crash builders either went out of business or stopped building it's not just because there was a fire and the wood cost more it was the reaction of the market and to people in the market and here's the results facts are very stubborn things you know they expect us to talk a great game but when they see it they believe it so 100 percent agree with you Emma. and then there's other charts that back that up that i sent in the email about today's meeting and you can download all of those print them out and take them with you good thank you Emma. anybody else yeah, we, I didn't know we we're doubling the population. <laughs> Why suddenly people are having more kids than they were before? Well, people have been stuck at home for a year and change. Well, but does that show? You know, it's it doubled, not uh, is not one extra kid, it's two extra kids in, during the pandemic. <laughs> yeah, it's about one and a half extra kids. Yeah, yeah, it's just, it's, it's just families are, are that way, okay? <laughs> These are, the, these are the millennials and the Gen Xers, and they're different than the boomers. I forgot about the tweens. That makes it for the other half. <laughs> All right. Anybody else? We're a little bit over today, but we had a lot of information to cover. So it's now in there to everyone. Thank you for pointing that out for me, Grazi. I appreciate it. So copy that link. Look at the links for everyone else. Copy those. I will be sending this. Um, video link to everyone. I upload it to our to my real estate coaching dude YouTube channel. The real estate just real estate coaching dude YouTube channel. I upload it either to the Tuesday training or this one will go to the Wednesday team meeting. So they're available to you with the ones from the past as well. Any other questions or comments before we call it a day? Thank you so much. All right, next week, we have the gentleman that spoke last week uh, coming to us and he's gonna be talking about uh, Google and Facebook and how to get the most out of it and stay out of jail. Then in, on June 16th, we've got Marty Kerr, the uh, tax assessor for Broward County that will be talking to us as well about some of the things that they're doing with their client, with uh, excuse me, with homeowners to prevent fraud. So it'll be a great opportunity to use his information to call your existing clients. Okay. Oh, so they did call you. I sent the lady. Uh, I gave her the your number to call. <laughs> okay. And for those of you that have names and numbers of clients like Elizabeth to get in touch with us, we appreciate that. Makes the AAD Thank program work. Thank you so much uh, for having me today, and I hope to see you next week. But I wanted to ask you another question. You told me that you're going to give me some updates regarding, uh, what's his name, Conti? Yes. So yes, I will, text you, I will text you his contact information one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Awesome. Thank and you I'll so much. You know you are Welcome. <laughs> So get that contract in, Izzy. Uh, well, I didn't get it. 
Um, you sent me your website, but I didn't get an email address. It was a long but not an address. I will resend it. I will resend it. Thank you. And I'll get that out to you. And keep, okay. keep me on top of things, you know. Use, use the stick. I respond well to that. Okay. <laughs> correct. I, I take correction well. I've been married for 30 years, so I'm pretty good at it. All right. Absolutely. <laughs> I'll use it. <laughs> Hopefully everybody got some good value for their time today. Thank you for your time. Uh, that Thank link you. is there. I'll include it in the email that I sent out with the copy of this. Okay? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Have a great week. Do it Same. right. Enjoy life. Live, work to live. Don't live to work. And Arthur's going to come in and do another class for our for our new people because that was so well received and he's he's such a good sport about that. See you later. Thank you. Bye. I think Gladys gets the prize for the cutest background. Mila, well done. I mean, when I went to show an agent how, you know, let's see who's the top agent in your area. Oh, one of our cell state agents is. That's Mila, you'll get to meet her. So, and again, cute look with the hairdo. Bye-bye. <laughs>